What is going on everybody? Hope you are having a great day, a great afternoon, or whatever time it is, I just hope it's great for you. So, I think it's safe to say that foldables are nothing new. At this point, most people have either seen one, owned one for a long time, or are first time owners. For those first time owners, there can be a lot to learn about your new device, but there are some settings that can certainly improve the usability overall on one of Samsung's foldables. Today, we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the first things to do that can greatly improve the usability of your new Samsung foldable device. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that I can confirm that what I'm about to go over will work on at least a Galaxy Z Fold 3 or a Galaxy Z Fold 4. I haven't owned the original Z Fold or the Z Fold 2, so I can't speak for those devices. That being said, I'll be using the Fold 4 here to demonstrate everything that I'm about to go over. First setting to go ahead and take a look into is enabling the new taskbar. The way to do this is if you go into the settings by swiping down your notification bar and hitting that little gear icon there, you can go to display, and then scroll down just a little bit and you'll find the taskbar here. Now I have already set this to on and that's why you're seeing the taskbar here. But of course, if it's not on, you can go ahead and toggle it on anyway. Now what this does is it allows you to switch between two applications at almost an instantaneous speed. So what you can do here is like say for instance, if we're in settings, we can go to the web browser just by tapping. We can go to the phone application, go back to the web browser, go back to phone, go back to settings. The beautiful thing about this bar is that it shows all of the icons you would have normally on the bottom of your screen, like the static ones. And it shows two of the most recent applications on the right side. So the taskbar is definitely good for multitasking. Now this taskbar is only going to show up when you are inside of an application. It will not show up when you're on the home screen because like I said, the static icons down here is what is shown on that taskbar. So if you're in the browser, you'll see that taskbar there, but what if you wanna go ahead and hide it? Well, you can actually do that. Just go ahead and press on an empty space and then it'll go away and you can do the same thing in reverse to bring it back. So pressing right near the edge of the screen will bring it right back up. Pressing and holding actually, I'm sorry. So yes, this taskbar just really makes it convenient to go ahead and use this large display and switch between apps without much effort. The next setting we're gonna take a look at is continue apps on cover screen. So again, this is in the display tab and you'll have to scroll down and find continue apps on cover screen. And what this does is exactly what it sounds like. It just allows you to go ahead and close the main display and continue an application onto the cover screen. So what we're gonna do here is go into that menu. So the example we're gonna use is AA Wireless. Now, as you can see, I have this turned off and what's gonna happen is if I go into the app here and I close the device, you'll notice that it just goes to the lock screen or my always on display in this case. Now, if I was to go ahead and go back to the settings, turn that switch on and do the same thing, go back to AA wireless, close the display, you'll notice that the app continues on to the cover screen. Now the great use case for this is sometimes when you are open to the main display, you're probably gonna be standing still. You most likely won't be walking, or maybe you will, but for me, I don't like to walk and use my main display. I just like to kind of stand still. However, there are times where I'm not actually done using an application, so I wanna continue what I'm doing there. This is what Continue Apps on Cover Screen allows you to do in a nutshell. Now, you can enable it for all apps by toggling the switch right up here, and it turns all those on, or you can turn it off, and it turns it off, you can also just go ahead and individually select the applications you want, but overall, another thing just to improve the usability of your foldable device. The next setting we're gonna take a look at is full screen apps on the cover screen and on the main display. So where we're gonna head to again is display. I feel like most of these things are gonna be here. 
And then we're gonna scroll down to full screen apps here. Keep in mind, this menu changes depending on which display you're using. So on the cover screen, you might only see a few applications here like you see on my screen. So the example we're gonna use here is the speed test app. Now notice how I have that set to off and everything else here on this menu set to on. So what will happen is if I go into the speed test app, you will notice that there is sort of a grayish bar up here and a grayish bar down here. And most of the application is actually sort of in the middle of that. Now, if I was to go back to the full screen apps menu here and turn this on, you'll notice that speed tests, it has to restart. But now what will happen is it'll take up the full amount of the display. Now, as I mentioned before, this menu conforms depending on which display you're using at the moment. So we're using the cover screen, but if I go ahead and open this, you'll see a ton more options here, like literally almost every single app, if not every single app. The big thing with this is you have three different aspect ratios that you can set for the applications on the main screen. So if you read here, set an aspect ratio for each app when it's being shown on the main display, main screen, sorry. If we go ahead and use the example with AA Wireless once again, if I set this to four by three and go back to the AA Wireless app, you'll notice it does not take up the full display. Now, if I go back and set it to 16 by nine, you'll notice that it still comes in a different aspect ratio here, doesn't take up the full display. But if I go back one more time and set it to full screen, it should go ahead and take up the full display as you see here. The next setting we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is the ability to hide the camera cutout while in applications. So again, this is in display, big surprise there. And if you go to camera cutout, I'm gonna use AA Wireless again as my example, but once you tap on an app here, you can either set it to auto, hide camera cutout, or show camera cutout. So if we go into AA Wireless, you'll notice that there's sort of a gray bar here to kind of show the camera cutout, to kind of give it a highlight. And yes, I did have to turn my dark mode off in order to show this correctly. Now, if I go back to the camera cutout menu here and turn it on to hide camera cutout, what should happen here is it turns the bar black with everything else so you can kind of see that it's sort of hidden but it's not really hidden but it is sort of I guess you could say. Overall it's just to kind of make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing when you have that camera cut out here on this screen. One thing to note about this is that if you are on the main screen trying to set this up you cannot do so. If you actually tap it it'll also tell you that you can only use this on the cover screen. For the next setting, we're actually moving away from the display menu and going into advanced features. Then we're going into labs. And what we're looking at here is the ability to auto rotate apps, which you can actually find by scrolling right down to the bottom here. So in this menu, if you tap on an app and have it set to app default, what will happen is that app will not rotate. If you set it to app aspect ratio and we go into the AA wireless app once again, you'll notice that if I turn the phone sideways, now it goes into either, I think this is like a 16 by three or four by three rotate app ratio. I probably said that really wrong, but you get what I'm getting at here. If I go back to the same app and turn it on to full screen, go back to the app once again, rotate, you can notice here that it actually rotates when I rotate my phone. And the other thing about this is that you have to make sure that the auto rotate is either set on or off within your notification bar. I have mine set to on, so all of my apps will auto rotate unless I say different. This is a really useful feature because I actually had to go ahead and download a separate application when this was not built in to automatically rotate certain apps while not rotating others. So I'm glad Samsung added this in. For this next one, we're still gonna be in the labs menu, but we're gonna scroll all the way down and go to flex mode panel. 
So flex mode is a feature that has been with at least the Galaxy Z Fold 3, probably on the other ones. Like I said, I have never had them, but flex mode allows you to use the upper half of the screen to display a video while using your phone as a stand of sorts. For this example, I'm gonna use the YouTube app. As you can see here, it provides a custom layout for this, but normally you'd have to go ahead and turn on any of these switches to go ahead and use an app in flex mode. Just to kind of show you what flex mode does though, if we go to YouTube, we pick a video, let's do this one at the top here. What you can do is use your phone in flex mode to show that video, like I said, at the top of the screen while having the bottom of the display be used for something else. Now in an app like YouTube, of course, it utilizes just that top screen so you can kind of sit your phone on a table and watch videos without having a case that stands it up. When you enable this and you're in an application that doesn't have a specific layout provided for it, it'll show some controls here at the bottom and the content at the top. With these controls, you can actually enable something like the touchpad here and it gives you a mouse and everything so it kind of acts like a makeshift laptop which is pretty cool. You can control your volume if you want. You can control your brightness. You can take a screenshot if you'd like. And I forget what this button is over here. That brings down the notification bar. So yes, overall flex mode is a pretty useful feature, especially because of the fact that you don't have to go out and buy a case. Now, of course, a case would give you a full stand and most likely allow you to use the full screen, but if you have it, why not use it, right? Next up, we're still sticking with the advanced features tab. And this time we're scrolling all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna look at the second option up from the bottom, which is finger sensor gestures. Now the Fold has a physical fingerprint built into its power button over here on the right. And that power button slash fingerprint sensor can be used to open the notification panel or open Samsung wallet. So we're gonna take a look at open notification panel. Now the Fold 3 is a big device. So do you really wanna go ahead and open your notification panel by scrolling down from the top all the time? Probably not. So to mitigate that, you can go ahead and turn on open notification panel in the finger sensor and gestures menu here, and you can swipe down and open your notification panel. You can even do it two times to open the full thing. One of the things that may or may not be obvious about a foldable is the fact that since you have two displays, those displays can be treated differently in reference to the icons you have on your home screen. So if you've noticed during this video, I have a tree that I took a picture of on my cover screen, and I just went ahead and put the Adobe Acrobat icon right on that screen. If I open to the main display, however, I have another picture I've taken and I have the AA wireless application right there. So for people who want to go ahead and have a unified experience and just have whatever's on their cover screen mirrored on their main display, that is definitely an option. To go ahead and get to this setting, the best way I find is to take two fingers and swipe inward, go to settings on the bottom right here, and then cover screen mirroring is what we're looking for. So if you go ahead and turn this on and apply, what this is gonna do is mirror whatever is on your cover screen. So I have some apps over here. This is my Google page. If I open this, you'll notice that it is now mirrored that Google page there. And if you notice over here to the right, I have the other page I had with the Adobe Acrobat icon here. Now, personally for me, I like to keep this off because I do like to have that fine-tuned control of being able to choose whatever is on my main display and optimize that versus what's on my cover screen. However, you can go ahead and unify both of them if you would like by using that feature. We're going right back to advanced features for this next one in the settings menu. And this time we're gonna go to motion and gestures and this is actually a setting that has been in Samsung phones and non-foldable Samsung phones, I believe, but it's pretty important. So the setting that I'm talking about, actually settings, is the double tap to turn on screen 
and double tap to turn off screen. So all you have to do is really enable these, just turn the switch on, and what'll happen is when you are on an empty space on your display and double tap, it will turn off the screen, double tap again, and it'll turn it on. This is actually pretty useful for when I'm washing dishes and I wanna turn my display on. So you can just kinda of have it there, double tap to turn it on, double tap to turn it on again, and double tap to turn it off. Yeah, pretty useful feature. Just something that people would really want to remember is there. These next two features have to do with the ability to either use multi-window or to use pop-up window. So what we're gonna do is go into the advanced features, labs, and then we wanna take a look at these two settings right here. Swipe for pop-up view and swipe for split screen. If you want a deeper explanation of what these do, you can actually go ahead and tap on the text and it'll show you exactly what it does in this illustration here. However, it's really simple and straightforward. Just go ahead and turn them on and what this will allow you to do is take your finger and drag in from either the top left corner or the top right corner and put an app into pop-up view. And if you'd like to go ahead and multi-window, you can do that, of course, a few different ways, yes, but arguably what I find the best way to do this is take two fingers and swipe up from the bottom. You can also take two fingers and swipe in from the side, like sort of like a left motion in with both of your fingers. You can also do the same thing by swiping in with two fingers from the right or the left side, but really I find that this is a much better and more natural way to go ahead and do this. And of course you can go ahead and tap on your other app and voila, we have multi-window, much easier. So Samsung's foldable devices having a large display should mean that you can have better productivity. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite features is the ability to use three applications at the same time. So as you can see here, I've opened the settings and the Adobe app, but let's say for instance, if I wanna go ahead and open up another app without putting that into pop-up window. If I go ahead and use my edge panel here, and I think you can do this another way, but the edge panel is the best way right now. If I go ahead and tap on voice recorder, drop that in the corner here, you can see now I'm able to use three applications. So pretty nifty, pretty neat feature. This has actually been on the Z Fold 3, but definitely something I thought I would remind first time users of. Now this last feature is actually gonna be back in the display menu. And what we're taking a look at is the extra brightness toggle. Now I don't remember if this was on the Fold 3, and I'm sorry about that. I know I said this was supposed to be for the Fold 3 and the Fold 4, but it is on the Fold 4. What this allows you to do is use the maximum brightness of the display here because when you're looking at these foldable displays, they can be pretty dim sometimes. And this is a setting on other Samsung phones too. So all we have to do is turn this on, extra brightness. And, and what this does is, like it says here, increase the maximum brightness. This uses more battery, of course we know that. And I know I probably contradicted myself by talking about other devices when I said I was only talking about the Z Fold 3 and the Z Fold 4, but Hey, I try to be as universal as possible. Okay, so that is all I have for you today. We can definitely say that foldables are very interesting devices and Samsung is pretty much the lead manufacturer in foldable devices at the moment. Now, all of the features I taught you here are things you can definitely do on your own time, but I thought I would definitely share what it is I found out of what I found interesting. Now, moving on to the Fold 4, what I would think someone else getting this new device or any foldable device would be interested in the first time around. So as always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have learned something today and have a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, or a great night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.